Redoot is one of the best options to choose to create your games, thanks to its simple user interface and beginner-friendly programming language. As a result, in a matter of just few minutes, you can have a completely playable game. Moreover, with the Unity chaos about its runtime fee, many developers want to change to an open source engine like Godot. Today, you'll learn how to quickly download and set up Godot to start creating your games. Now, let's start. Ok, so the first thing is to look for Godot just in Google Chrome or in any browser that you're using and the first re result is gonna be this one, ok? So, you click here. And well, this one is the Godot engine website. Here is the URL that I'm gonna leave in the description down below. Here if you scroll down a little bit, well firstly you're gonna encounter the latest news. And well, then if you continue scroll scrolling a little bit more, you can find some features that Godot has. So I really recommend you to check them out before actually installing them, so that you will know a little bit more about Godot before actually starting to using it. As I told you, here you have a list of the main features you wanna find um, in the engine, and you even have here all the projects, or well, maybe not all the projects, but, but the most relevant projects that have been created with this engine in order to inspire you. Now, in order to download Godot, let's do the following. You have two versions that you can download, the LTS version, which is, as you can read right here, the long-term support version of Godot 3, or you can download the latest version, which is version 4 of the engine. Being honest, if you are just starting out, both versions are gonna be uh, mostly the same, same engines and versions. But uh, I really recommend you to download the fourth version in order to take advantage of all the main features that this version offers you. So let's click here, download latest. And now here you can just click uh, this button. However, you can scroll down a little bit and you will find uh, more downloads, okay? and also the all, all of the supported platforms Android, Linux, Mac OS, Windows and even HTML so in this case I'm just gonna click right here and the download will start this is gonna give us a compressed file which is super easy to extract uh, you can use any software to do this uh, for example WinRAR or 7-zip you can look for them completely free on the internet probably you have already installed some of them when you have bought your device so let's right click in our file WinRAR and extract here this is gonna give us two main files firstly we have the executable file which, which has like only the Godot icon and we also have the window that has of course the console icon right there so of course I'm just gonna open the executable version of the engine and well here we can check out uh, all the interface of the setup of the engine first of all we have the local projects window where we can find the projects that we have created or imported this means that whenever you create a new project it will appear on the list down below you also have the asset library projects where you will find some pre-made projects that the good job community have made you even have here the possibility of uh, filtering the different projects for example templates projects demos etc so this feature is also really cool if you have never created a game before and you want to in a way study how they are made well uh, the asset library project is a very good way of doing this now in order to create a project you can just click here on the new project button you're gonna give it a name in my case I'm just gonna give it the name of test download and then you can select your project path as you can see the default path is just in your documents so I'm gonna leave it right there but here with the option browse you can select any folder that you want and you can even create a new folder so in this case I have a warning you cannot save a project in the selected path please make a new folder or choose a new path so in order to make things a little bit uh, fastly let's just create here the folder 
then you can select here the renderer that I suggest that as we are just starting out, just select forward plus which is the default one. Then you will just click here create an edit and here we are in good out. Let's talk a, a little bit about its interface. First of all we can see here the file system where all of our files for example, the icons, scenes, files, uh, scripts, etc. will appear. Then we have the scene window where all the elements in our scenes will appear. For example, if we have a player, uh, an enemy, a user interface, etc. it will appear right here. We also have the inspector with which we can modify some properties about the different game objects. And of course we have the main viewport where we can actually see our game. Finally, we have the script window where we will be able to write our code and our asset library where we will be able to download some assets. Now let's start creating uh, basic stuff. So in order to do this, I'm gonna change to the 2D mode as you can see. And what I want to create is just a very simple user interface to create a score counter. In order to do this, we have to create a root node. The nodes are basically all the game objects that Godot is gonna use. If you want to create a player, well that player is gonna be some specific node type. If we want to create, I don't know, an static wall, well then that's gonna be a specific node type. So if we click right here on another node, you can see all the node list, okay? And basically, well, as you can see we have sprites, we have audio stream players, we have literally everything that we need to create our games. In this case, as I told you, I want to create a very simple score counter and that is actually a user interface. So I'm gonna start with a user interface node that as you can see allow us to have this kind of anchors right here that are, that are used to actually create our user interfaces. By double clicking in the node, I'm gonna rename it to uh, UI, okay? Then I'm gonna go to scene save scene and I'm gonna save it with this exact name as I told you in the beginning here in my file system I already have my scene now I want to have a text over here at the top displaying the amount score uh, the, the the current amount of score that I have and then a button to actually increase that score so that will be two elements the first one to create the text here are called labels okay and here we have a short description a control for displaying plain text exactly what we want here in the inspector as i told you we can modify some properties in this case for example the text property if i write here hello as you can see the hello message is uh, written right there so the first thing that i'm gonna do is firstly i'm gonna make this label a little bit bigger but as you can see the font size doesn't change Let's scroll down a little bit here in the inspector. Theme overrides font sizes, enable it, and we are gonna write some uh, number here, for example, 10. Well, a little bit more would be okay, 40. Okay, that may work. And then I'm gonna actually center it horizontally and vertically. Here, horizontal alignment, I can make it a little bit wider. Center and center, okay? Once I have my message, I'm going to modify to score, okay, like this. So now we can actually modify it. I'm going to start it at zero and then we're going to increase, of course, this score. I don't want it to be on the top left of my screen. So by clicking on this anchor um, button, I'm going to just center it at the top, center top. And then using here the move tool, okay. I'm gonna move it down a little bit. Also, I'm gonna need my button that I was telling you about, so let's add it right here, it's called button. And now, let's gonna add here a text that is just gonna be plus one. I'm gonna do it a little bit uh, bigger. In order to do that, we were in the move tool, well, we uh, go again to the select mode. And holding shift in our keyboard, we can make it a little bit bigger. Uh, then I'm gonna make it a little bit wider, like this. Okay. And then again, I'm, I need to modify its text size. So let's go to theme overrides, font sizes, enable it. 
and give it an amount, for example 30. It looks good. So let's center it, center it at the bottom and again with the move tool I'm gonna move it up a little bit. Let's save our changes. And now let's also rename this note. In this case, this is going to be our score label. And this one, the button is going to be our uh, increase score button. Now, in order to actually, to actually create some behaviors, we are going to need our script. A script is basically the file where we write our code that is going to be executed when something happens, of course. So let's select our UI root node here on the attach script and here you can select a template okay so in this case we are just gonna create an empty script because if we select the default as you can see it's gonna give us the base template for now we default without cycle methods so this means that it's gonna actually uh, give us some functions and things that I don't want to create by default so let's initialize it as an empty we click here create and as you can see the only line right here is that it extends of a control node this means that the node to which this script is attached is actually a control node and in fact that is correct as you can see here it says type control now i'm going to explain two very simple things uh, functions we have two main functions here the ready function uh, that is called when the game starts playing so I'm just gonna click here print that what print does is it just uh, shows a message in the console so I'm gonna print print here for example hello so now when we click here play you know it's gonna ask us to select a main scene basically the main scene is the one that is gonna be run when we start playing so the scene that we want to play when we start playing is the current one so let's select our current scene and as you can see, we have the user interface we've just created and here in the output, we can see our message. Then we have other function that is also important that you know. And this one is called the process delta. This function is not only called when the game uh, starts playing, but also at every frame. So if I here write hello and I play a game, here in the output, as you can see, I'm getting a bunch, a bunch of hello messages. So I'm going to create very quickly a variable that I'm going to name it score in order to create a variable in Godot you just write this keyword then the name and then you assign a value in this case our scores is going to begin at zero. Then what we want to do is that once we click our button we want to increase our score. In order to detect that event we, we select our increase score button go to node and here the pressed signal we click connect and we have the signal that is that is called when we press this button so we're gonna increase our score by one our current score by one and then once our score is updated we are gonna grab our score label with the dollar symbol at the beginning dot text and we're gonna assign here the score value but the thing here is that the score is actually an integer 0, 1, 2, 3 but the text is actually a string so in order to convert an integer to a string we just write like this now when we start playing and we press our increase button as you can see our score is increased however we don't have actually the text of score and our score amount so to fix that it's actually super simple we're just gonna leave a space right there and we're gonna write here score leave a space plus and there we will have everything correct now when we play again everything works just fine thanks a lot for watching the video if you were able to download good jokes and create something basic it means that the tutorial was helpful so if that was the case please consider subscribing to the channel to continue watching good content see you in the next one and bye bye